Hey guys, Dr. Luke Crate here with another satisfactory tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to do a vertical manifold where you can squeeze as much production as you can in a small area. Let's get started. So this is we're going to work on our vertical manifold today. So we're going to have two columns of eight smelters, but this can really be done at any scale. And it's great for areas where you want to pack a lot of capacity into a small vertical area like I do. I want to squeeze this in between this building and this rock. So we're going to build a vertical manifold right here with 16 smelters. And so you can fit this really on a two by two foundation square. We're going to make it a little bit bigger and bleed into three. So two foundations wide, three foundations long. Of course, this will give you 16, 24, 30, 50 smelters vertically. You can get as many as you want, but your footprint will be two foundations wide by three foundations long. All right, let's get out our smelter. And we wanna line these up with your foundation. We want the first one coming out here where the edge is in the middle of the foundation and the edge is just over the front edge. And you can see this will line up the back edge with the foundation. So just have that front edge hanging off just a little bit. Put this right in the middle, line it up. There we go. All right, so there's our first two smelters and we're gonna have two towers of eight each here and have the manifold work its way back and forth between the two smelters. So the next thing we need to do is get our platforms for our additional smelters. And so what we can do is get out our wall, four meter wall here. We'll do one, two, four meter walls and then switch to a one meter wall and do one, two of those. And then, so I'm gonna switch to a foundation here. I'm gonna actually use this ramp just to make it look a little bit better, but you can use a regular foundation. Put it here. And there, like that. So that gives us two more. So we can put two more smelters down here. And we will put them in the exact same spot with the front barely hanging over the ledge. And this in the same way, right in the middle, like this. So let's switch to our four meter walls again. We'll put it on top. One, two, and then two one meter walls, one, two. So each setting is 10 meters high. All right, so then we can put on our platform again here. That one there. And then we get out our smelter. But another one, we want it to barely hang off the edge. Put it in the middle, same way. All right, so now we have six smelters. And of course, we can keep going. I will keep going, and I'll show you here in a little bit. I'll do the rest in fast forward so we can do after this. But let's get the manifold going for these six smelters. And really, if you're early in the game, kind of what this manifold uh, design is designed for, you really probably don't need more than this. Uh, you may not have the belts needed for this. So in our last video where we had the compact manifold, horizontal manifold that we had, uh, we used splitter stacks to get your belts off the ground. And we'll do some splitter stacks here as well, but just to make it a little bit easier for us to get our stuff in the right place um, and lined up with our uh, each of our smelters. So what we're gonna do now that we have these six smelters set up is get out our splitter. We wanna line up our splitter with our output from our miner, which is here, and this machine. So you can actually have it as close as that for it to work. You can have it here where it doesn't clip at all. Um, but I think I'm going to have it right here, which doesn't touch the machine, but it's still very close. Uh, and so you want the input facing where it's coming from here. So facing out. And so we'll hook up this to the machine here. So then we need another splitter here, just almost making a horizontal manifold here where we want the input facing that output of the splitter like that hook that up, uh, hook this up to the machine. So this is just a normal horizontal manifold here. This is just two machines. The input will come in here, go into this machine. Once it fills up, it will overflow into the next one. So what we need now is the next step of the overflow. But instead of continuing that horizontal manifold, we're going to go vertical. So that's why we oriented our splitters in this way. So what we need, though, is a splitter up here this high. So we're gonna go back to our old friend, the splitter stack from our last manifold video. So each splitter is two meters high. So 
that means we made our walls 10 meters high, so that's five splitters. So once we put another one on top, it will be the height of this splitter. So let's do that. We'll get our splitter out and we'll do five. Uh, we have one there, so two, three, four, five, and those directions don't matter. But here we're gonna put our sixth one, which lines up with the machine. And we want our input coming out the front like this. All right. And then we're going to get out our lift, attach it to the very bottom one coming out the front, and then make it come up and match that last splitter. So let's do the other one here next to it. And we'll do another one, two, three, four, five. And this one will line up. So we want it to come across and face the splitter that we just put the lift into like that. You'll see the line, All right? Okay. And then what we'll do here is hook up these machines uh, with our conveyor belts. Going across like this. And then into that machine. So we'll do the same thing here. We just need to add another level, but instead of being on this side, that output is already full. So we can't have it on the same side. So we're gonna do a little bit of a zigzag pattern. And so we'll put the splitter stack here first. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And the sixth one lines up with our machine, but we want the input coming in the front like this. So we'll get on our lift, make sure that we're hooking it up to the one with the belt in it like this, and then make it go up to our sixth one. You can see when it has the line, which is that one right there. Okay, and then it hooks up. So we'll do another splitter stack here. One, two, this is the second one on this level. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we worry about our input direction. We want it to face the one right there across, just like on the last level. So we'll get up here and then we'll hook up our belts across here and hook up the machine. So that is the gist of our vertical manifold there is you have alternate the lifts from side to side. You can see you can keep extending this as long as you want. You can leave these splitters here if you want. Uh, I normally take them off, but some people don't like to do that because of the floating look. Another thing you can do is support them with beams. That's what I normally do. But to do that, you need to have beams unlocked from the awesome shop and steel. So this is really just oriented to the beginner that just has the very basic stuff at the start. Of course, we can add beams to this and there's other ways to support it as well. but. Beams being the easiest way if you have steel and have them unlocked from the awesome shop. This is what this looks like here with the splitters opened up uh, and delete all the extra ones deleted. So you can make this really as tall as you want. Um, and so we'll do the same thing on the back to get the machine to get the output back and then we'll um, get it coming out the front here as well. So let's before we do that though, let's get this side colored up. I don't like looking at this orange. So I will uh, speed this up and get it colored up and see you on the flip side. Okay, so you guys may be watching this with me and my hover pack flying around and be a little jealous. Like, oh, how can I do this vertical manifold without having the hover pack? Dude, I thought this was for beginners. Anyway, so there's a couple tricks that you can do. And I try not to do things that are unlocked in the awesome shop yet, since this really is for beginners. You do have the awesome shop unlocked. You can use walkways, you can use uh, catwalk stairs, you can use ladders on the side of a building like you have right here. This would get you plenty high onto a stack of things like that. But one way if you don't have the awesome shop unloaded and you have a storage container unlocked, you can actually use the storage container, which has a ladder on the side as a little platform. So let's go down here. You just stack up storage containers and I know they take materials, but you can save up for a little bit. There's unlimited materials and you climb up the little ladder on the side of the storage container and voila, then you're high enough. And then if you need to work on another level, you can just add another storage container. Even that you can build, get yourself onto the roof uh, like that. So that's one way to get around having the hover pack. If you want to squeeze in a vertical manifold uh, into your designs and you're still early in the game and haven't been able to unlock the jetpack or the hover pack to be able to get up and down this easy.
So we're going to do things very similarly on the back. So we're going to use mergers back here instead of splitters. And that's how we're going to get everything to come back together to feed out here in the front. But we're going to do one thing differently here down at the bottom. So we're going to have this merger. Uh, that's the splitter, wrong button. Uh, we're going to use this merger and have the output go right between things like this. I have to be careful because there's actually a poison gas node right behind me. And so I have to be careful where I fly so I don't kill myself here. Uh, and then so we have this merger. We can have it coming in uh, like this, facing it, and have this one facing it as well like that so that will give us this and so let's do some invisible little belts inside there so we have those too why are we going to do this is we're actually going to make our uh, let's see the poison gas is killing me we're going to make this output come out here and come over this belt why not just came up with this but why not so let's get uh, a stackable conveyor pole and we can put it right here and then we can run this out to it like this and so you can see this is going to let us come right out the middle and then we can have another stackable conveyor pole here if we want like this and then we have that coming out like this and then that can go wherever you need it right so we're not going to hook that up right now but that can go wherever you need it including right here or the next factory so what i'm going to actually do just to let you know as I'm gonna make some parts for this, uh, for this factory right over here. So I'm gonna have this uh, belt come run around to this and then go into another building I'm gonna build right here. So that is one way to get your parts out and kind of keep it in the same footprint uh, and have it come out this way. All right, so let's get back to our manifold building. So we have this bottom part here. So let's get our belts going in here like this. All right, so those are coming out and those are merging in here. We have a horizontal manifold as we normally do. So what we really need to do now is a merger stack, a merger stack. And so we'll do one, two, three, four, five. And with the same deal here, we're going to put this in, but we need to make sure that our output goes out the front just like that. And so we'll hook up a lift to the bottom and then a lift to the very bottom and then there's that coming down and so now we need another stack of mergers again these don't want me to kill the poison gas one two three four five and this is the one where the direction matters and we want that one to go to the side just like it is right now so we'll hook this up with that belt that belt that belt and so we already have our we already have our manifold taking shape. And so we'll finish this part off by adding some more mergers here under our merger stack. So when you're starting a new level like this, you wanna start on the side where the lift is not. So go over here and do one, and then this is two on this level, three, four, five. We want the output to aim straight out like this so we can put our lift down to the lower level. So we'll go ahead and do that now. This goes down here, and then this goes into the level where your belt is coming out of. So right there. Okay. Then we'll put another stack of mergers. One, two, three, four, five. And then this one here. And we want the output to go straight across the hall to that one like that. So we'll put this belt in, that belt in, that belt in. And so now we have this merger manifold which will take everything from the inputs here merge them send them down the lift grab everything else in the way send them down that lift to the bottom and then out the front so what i'm gonna do now is uh try not to get killed by this poison gas right behind me and um get rid of these extra splitters and color these up so i'll see you on the flip side So next we're going to do is hook up the power. So one of the things that we can do here is use our wall outlets, which is what I recommend. If you have those unlocked from the awesome shop, you can hide your power in here very easily because this power 
outlets are located right next to each other on these machines. It's very easy to hide your power. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, regular power poles since this is really a design meant for beginners. So one of the problems with bringing your belt up here in the middle is you can't quite put this up in the center, but put this right here in between. That's as good a place as any. And then we'll put them on each of these poles on each level. So we'll put this one here where it's hanging off partway. And the same thing here, put this one here where it's hanging off partway. And so if we do this, you don't even need to really be hanging off partway, but I don't mind the way that looks. So let's get our power lines out. We'll hook up our center poles together. So if we make this go straight down like that, the wire actually goes straight out the bottom of the pole. Looks pretty good, pretty clean, keeps it together. And uh, we can't do that because this one's a little off center here, but we'll hook this up with the power and it goes off to the side, it doesn't clip or anything, so that's okay. So we'll hook up each, each machine on each level to a pole. And we'll have enough, even though these are Mark 1 poles, you have connecting to two other poles, two machines like this. I'll do the same here on this last level. Like so. so we have everything hooked up to the power. Let's give it a recipe. So what we have is iron ore coming out here. We're gonna use this to smelt iron ingots. So we'll put iron ingots on here. And that gives us 30 iron ore for th uh, 30 iron ingots for 30 iron ore per minute. And so I'm gonna put this recipe on here. I'm gonna copy the settings and I am gonna then paste these if you're in update six, I could just point at it and hit control V, uh, but I'm still playing update five. I'm waiting for it to, uh, update six to be a little bit more stable, but we can still paste these in. We just have to open up the menu. So you press E, control V, and then you're there. So now that we have all the recipes on there, we have all the power. And so what I would like to do now is hook up our input. And so I've lined it up here nicely with this output uh, and so I'm just gonna drag this over. I'm using Mark V belts uh, because I'm gonna end up making this extremely tall, uh, 16 smelters. But um, for you, if you have Mark I belts, you'll really only be able to do two smelters worth. But once you get Mark II belts, you can use this design to do a double layer a smelter approach for iron ore because it's 30 iron ore for 30 minutes. Mark I belts are only 60, so it can only feed two of these at a time. These belts are 760, so they can feed even my 16 smelters uh, with ease. So I'm gonna put in my belt here, hook this up, and you're gonna see everything start flowing through very quickly up our lifts, across, up our lifts, across. So if, then if we go up here all the way to the top, we're already full. Okay, so we have our six smelter vertical manifold with the, you can see the iron ore has come in the front and gone up through our S-shaped splitter lift conveyor belt pathway and we'll soon see the stuff come out the end and take a similar s-shaped path down to the bottom and then come out the middle and so all this left now we have the recipes on we have all the wires hooked up and the only thing we need to do is hook up the master power to hook up this bottom pole to the wall let's do that my favorite part And voila, 180 iron ingots per minute in a vertical manifold with six smelters. You can see everything starting to come out down there. And now everything is coming, the output has come out the front with our iron ingots. You can see it start to back up here. So yeah, everything is working as designed. You see everything coming out. And soon these things will all be full. This front one is probably already full. So part of what the manifold does, it fills up the first machine. And when it's full like this, more stuff starts passing by its output of the splitter and going further up the chain. So now this one is filling up, right? And so the next one to fill up will be this one since that's where it comes up. Now this one is at 50, but you can see it's starting to fill up. And as it runs over time, this manifold system will end up filling up all these machines because our output is faster. Our output of iron ore is faster than our output, uh, total output of iron ingots. So we have more iron ore coming in than we have than what we need to make these 180 iron ingots per minute. You can see the smoke bellowing out the top and we'll see these. Will, this will really fill up with smoke because these smelters really pump it out. Since you have that kind of roof right over them, 
uh, it will be a pretty smoky build. So this is all you need to do to get a vertical smelter if you really want to fill up uh, a tight area, squeeze something in between some rocks, some poison gas, a river, and uh, your existing building that you built. And so this is just an easy way to save space and be efficient at the same time. One input, everything comes out nice and clean. Uh, one input, one output. Then you just build around this and I think you can make it look uh, pretty cool as well. Um, some bonus things you can do is use wall outlets instead of power poles once you unlock those. You can also use beams to have a more supported look in between the splitter towers and the merger towers. But other than this, this is a good way you know, stuff something in and something that I do all the time when I'm making a bigger factory. Oftentimes with the lower level crafting things like smelters or constructors, I will use a very compact design. And with things that are have two or more inputs, I'll start to use things that are spread out and make things a little bit more uh, artistic. And so you'll see that in some of my future videos when I talk about how to best feed assemblers uh, manufacturers and even blenders but I really just wanted to make this as a way if you wanted to put things in a small area and still have it look good and not too messy and have everything just come in one place come out another place and help you keep things organized uh, what I'm gonna do next is actually I'm gonna sadly tear this down and rebuild it because I wanted to build it one uh, one foundation further over towards the poison gas to get it out over the water so this ends the instructional part of the video so if you enjoy this uh tutorial please subscribe to my channel you'll get some more content like this like this video if you liked it it really helps us get the video in front of uh more eyes and helps us grow the channel but next i'm going to uh, tear this down and then build this uh as i want for this factory which will be actually 16 uh smelters so two columns of eight high all right, I'll check back in with you when I'm done, but I'm gonna give you the fast forward build of my 16 smelter tower uh, here in a second. Stay tuned. Okay, so I lied a little bit. I said I was gonna show you the full build of all 16 smelters and then fast forward it. And I did mean to do that, but then I forgot to hit start record before I built this giant tower. And I really couldn't bring myself to tear it down and build it again. So here you go. This is my 16 smelter vertical manifold. Two columns of eight smelters. Let's go take a quick look. So there's the six smelters at the bottom that we built earlier, plus six more smelters there, plus four more smelters there is 16 smelters. This gives us 480 iron ingots per minute. As you see, we just use the same design for this as we did earlier, but just covered it in glass walls and use some light control to turn the light, this cool blue color, added in some frame pillars here on the corner and a steel roof. And there you go, 480 iron ingots per minute in style all right well thanks for watching i'm dr luke crate i'll be back with more of these tutorials showing you how to feed manufacturers assemblers blenders and some other things coming soon so like this video if you like the content subscribe to the channel uh, to see what's coming up next thanks for joining me bye bye